According to the NRCS practice standards, a seasonal high tunnel is a structure at least six feet in height, which modifies the climate inside to create more favorable growing conditions for vegetables and other specialty crops. Made of ribs of plastic or metal pipes covered with a layer of plastic sheeting, high tunnels are easy to build, maintain, and move. Laura and Randy Pierce in Three Forks are one of the producers taking advantage of the NRCS three-year high tunnel initiative. If the equip wasn't around, we wouldn't have it because we couldn't afford it. something like this. And we do. We want to bring more fruits and vegetables to the public. You know, we want to put, dig, take them to the co-op store and we're going to probably sign a contract with them. As part of the USDA's Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative, Montana is one of 40 states participating in this pilot project that will help evaluate if high tunnels are effective in reducing pesticide use, keeping vital nutrients in the soil, extending the growing season, increasing yields, and providing other benefits to growers. High tunnels, different from greenhouses, are passively heated by the sun, have lower energy costs than greenhouses, and are cooled by manual ventilation. You know, when we want to regulate this temperature, we do this in both. Just turn this crank many times, and you can see the sides start to drop. And you do this on both sides, and that's what you get, and the temperatures then regulate. Randy says he is learning as the seasons progress. Well, and these, these things are phenomenal because if you keep the sides up and, and this, the humidity increases in these areas because of the plants and your irrigation system, it'll go up in the night and collect on the ceiling and the plastic. When the sun comes out and it starts to warm up again, then this thing will rain down on here and it's re it's recycling the moisture in, in this little area. And so that's what we're seeing and hearing is the rain starting to come, or not rain, but the water coming off the plastic acting like rain back to these crops. To water the plants in his high tunnel, Randy installed a micro-irrigation system. What we did is we put a micro-irrigation system into this. So we got this drip tape right here and here's an emitter and these things are spaced every 12 inches so there's a drop of water that comes out every 12 inches and you let it run for about an hour or half an hour and you get enough water down to grow these plants and so we put these at every row that we planted something and that's a two foot spacing to provide easy access to his high tunnel, Randy installed a door to help keep unwanted critters out but let him and his wife in. Built this little door here, this human little door, out of redwood and covered it with the material. And this becomes our little entry door then. And we walk in here and then we can do things and it keeps the, the animals out and it keeps the bugs out. And I can shut it and I can lock it from the inside. The ends, the doors, and the sides all roll up and down. Then I got to use this crank. And you got to crank these things open like a, a window blind. And so you just roll it. Randy also placed a composter with an easy access of high tunnel. Take all the greens, and here's our composter right here. And so we just throw it in here. And I've filled this composter up three times, plumb full. And we just give it the old rotation. Randy says there is some additional corrections that may have to be made that really don't have much to do with the structure itself. It's more about wind direction. I believe tomatoes included, corn, beans especially, need wind and movement of these crops to pollinate themselves. And because of the orientation of this high tunnel, our main wind comes from the doors, the big doors, in that direction. Well, I kept those closed down so I wouldn't introduce bugs that would be detrimental to this high tunnel. And we kept the sides regulating the temperatures 
However, because we didn't get the good winds coming through here, I believe the pollination didn't happen. And because we had lots of flowers on the beans, we had not one bean show up. And that's why it would be nice to talk to other people that have these high tunnels to see what kind of issues they come up with and are they the same issues that I've come up with. He says next year he plans to make some minor adjustments. So what we're going to do next year is we'll put the same type of netting that I have on the on the sides up about six or seven feet from the ground on these two ends. And then we'll open up the ends, those up, and then any bug that crawls won't be able to get in here or low-flying insects won't be able to get in here. And hopefully pollinator type of insects will be able to. High tunnels increase the availability of locally grown produce and other specialty crops in a conservation friendly way. High tunnels can help growers extend their growing seasons by providing protection for early or late season production and also expand the availability of healthy locally grown crops benefiting both producers and consumers. For additional information visit the USDA Service Center in your area or visit www.nrcs.usda.gov.